Hi everybody, it's Marty and welcome back to my channel. I'm in the living room today. Um, for those of you that are new, I am a woman of a teen transgendered transsexual experience. If you're looking for resources on that or videos on the journey through childhood to adulthood, um, my first 12 videos might be a good resource, so check them out. I hope they'll help you. And for all of you that are returning to my channel, it's Sunday, so today we're going to do a topic discussion uh, vlog. And today the topic is going to be, and I'm really nervous about it, is SRS. So, um, and they all also call it GAS, gas now, I guess. So, a sexual reassignment surgery or gender affirmation surgery. I'm in my third decade um, since I had done that. So, um, the code word for today is Pukachu, but that's what I'm gonna call that downstairs because I don't like to get into, uh, into the weeds or gory details. Statement. My mission statement for this channel is to help deepen the message of the transgendered experience through dialogue that contains hope, love, and understanding with each other. Okay, so stick around. Hi everybody, like I said, today I'm going to talk about, and I'm really freaked out about it, is SRS, sexual reassignment surgery. They call it vaginoplasty. Um, and for those that are looking into it, um, it would be like, you know, I liken it to, you know, if a, if a young woman is growing into being an older woman, they need to know about, you know, uh, you know, anti-flow coming into town and all that stuff too. So, um, it's, I think it's really important for, um, us to have dialogue on, uh, YouTube about, uh, SRS, sexual reassignment surgery, or gender affirmation, gender affirmation surgery, and because um, it's it's a really serious thing to to consider and do. Uh, for me, there was no question in my mind um, ever since I was a kid. But the reason why I wanted to talk about this is um, because I don't see a lot. I don't see a lot online about um, women 30 years, you know, after the fact and stuff like that too, and um, transgendered health. You know, I type in transgendered health and Pukachu, that's the code word for her, and, um, uh, well, I don't actually put in Pukachu, but you know what I mean. And I just, you just get all of this like porn stuff, right? And it's like, there is no, healthy resources yet of it because first of all most women my age that transitioned are dead because of there was no laws protecting us even in Canada um, we we're at high risk um, health wise because of the AIDS epidemic we we're at health uh, we we're at um, high mortality because of um, the the lifestyles that we had to fall into to survive and there was, you know, murder, suicide was just huge. And it is today too, but it was just astronomical back then. So there's this huge hole in, in society, in the LGBT world, um, of that generation of people. And it's, and it's, and it's really sad. And it's unfortunate when it comes to, um, transgendered health for older women. Um, most, a lot of uh, women, like I did, I've gone back and forth into stealth and not even known that I've done that, but a lot of women live in stealth because they just don't wanna have to deal with any of it. But the thing is, is that um, when it comes to our health, and stuff, we need the data to uh, for transgender health for older women to find out, um, you know, what we could do better, what works, what doesn't, stuff like that too. You know, I posted uh, last month about my HRT journey because I saw a woman that posted a video and she hadn't even had the Pukachu thing done. And she said, um, 
after SRS, you have to be on hormones for the rest of your life and everything. And it's not true. It's like I've been decades without it. You know, it's, um, um, it depends who you are. Everybody's different. Everybody's grandma's different. You know, like you'd be amazed if you took, you took uh, endocrine tests from anybody, you know, not just trans people, what their estrogen and testosterone levels would be like. It's like, you know, it, you'd be blown away. You know, grandma could ha grandma could have more testosterone that you could more than you could ever dreamed of. <laughs> you know, even before Pukachu time. So, anyways, I'm getting off topic. Um, I, I think I'm avoiding what I want to talk about, which is, <sighs> yeah. So, um, when my life got together and I had the surgery, and it was early '90s and early early 1990s and you know got my career then I got married in my in the 2000 early 2000s and um, everything Pukachu was happy working well going yeah you know having fun like just like any old other gal you know and um, yeah I got married it was a healthy uh, we had a healthy life and you know sexuality is part of it it's not the main part of a relationship but it is a piece of the pie and um, I said pie no it's Pukachu okay um, so um, yeah we had a healthy relationship that way you know and then as the years went on it kind of became like every Sunday at one o'clock type of thing you know and just would do it but excuse me but you know I hadn't you know, didn't have to do dilation anymore, stuff like that too. And it wasn't until I got online and I was divorced. Um, I got divorced, I started the divorce in 2011. And that's when I started to go online probably. And um, found out that they said, oh, you should be dilating like every week, even, even if you're active with a partner. And I was like, mm, unbeknownst to me. So anyway, I went, okay, I better try. So it had been about a year and it's like, I was noticing that I had this aversion to take care of Pukachu, you know, the one, God, once a week, like, forget it. It's like once a month if I was lucky. And I actually went to, um, to see a therapist about it. I would start sobbing when I was doing it. And I made the connection that it was because of my divorce. I was, I thought it was till death do us part and I was, absolutely in love with this man, but it was not healthy for me to be in that relationship. Um, I couldn't be there and it just broke my heart. And um, so I equated, of course, that my husband with every time you're supposed to do maintenance on Pukachu. And I just thought, oh God, I feel like a robot. It's so weird. I hated it. I just absolutely hated it. It made me feel so strange. But luckily I have a lot of really great cis women friends in my life. And for all of you that don't know what cis means, like I didn't until about a year ago, that means that if you are fine with the gender that you were born into. Okay, so, you know, so these cisgender women um, told me, oh my God, it's like, yeah, it's like, you're not the only one. It's like, God, because I just turned... 50 and they were saying oh my god you wouldn't believe how hard it is for me so it's, it's hard for everyone it's like if you don't you know use stuff it gets hard it's kind of like you liken it to an earlobe it's like um and you can tell usually what it'll be like for you by um your your um ear piercings and how i don't know if it's a wife's tell or what but it's that's what i've heard is that if you if your ear piercings grow over really quickly after you've had them for a few years and you don't wear anything in there it's like then you got to really watch it i've got two here three and two here that i hardly ever use and this one would be kind of tough to get into the top so yeah so liken it to that the middle one that i hardly ever use maybe once a year I can still do it, but it's kind of tough. And this one, oh my God, it's 1980s era low. I might as well, you know, have a big, huge bone through it. Well, we did back in the 80s. 
Okay, I'm off out topic again. Drink time. So, um, yeah, it psychologically affected me really deeply. And, um, and then I got remarried again in 2016. Um, I met my partner in 2015, but we waited until 2016 and I'm having problems. I'm having problems today and it's because I will not um, do the maintenance. It's uh, There's some aversion that I have that is just driving me nuts and um, so uh, yeah, this is kind of a confessional. I can't believe I'm saying this, but you know what? You know, if it wasn't for other friends, uh, trans women friends and that have gone through this and regular cis women friends that tell me how hard it is for them. And so I'm trying, I'm going to, going to the doctor, trying different um, things to make myself more comfortable and do it. You know, I can do it, but it's such an effort. And um, I have to, um, I have to just be more consistent with it. So I'm just throwing that out there because that's my experience, you know, three decades into um, the birth of Pukachu. And um, so hopefully just kind of admitting that and I will do an update on it, just Pukachu update, I'll call the video. <laughs> but um, uh, luckily I'm married to a beautiful, loving man and you know, there's lots of ways to enjoy yourself with a partner. This is a really hard one to talk about, you know, but these discussions need to happen. We need to have really open discussions on, on, um, you know, did you go through stuff like that? You know, leave comments down below, you know, did you get married? Were you affected by that? Did you let it go for a while? You know, did you, you know, you know, do I have anything to worry about? Is there sisters out there? Send me a private message. You can send me private messages and let me know. Um, uh, cause you know, the most powerful two words and that this, these two is wor two words have been hijacked by that movement, which I think is awesome. But, um, we used to say it in the rooms all the time. Me too. It's so powerful to hear that. Me too. So, um, it would just like, I, I would just like to hear me too when it comes to, um, this and, and I think it's important to put it out there. You know, for me, it's like I'm not in a critical part where I'm worried that, you know, I'm going to be coming part of the Barbie binary. Like everything's just going to grow over, you know. And I've I heard of stuff like that when I was a young little tweenie running around, you know, in the clubs and stuff. And there was this beautiful woman and she ended up, she ended up dying in a car accident. God, she was gorgeous. And, um... Yeah, she had some botched surgery that she wasn't happy with and she just, the, the, the rumor was is that she just let it, you know, grow over type of thing. <sighs> I hope this was G-rated enough. Stuff that I don't see in YouTube when it comes to the transgender experience. So that's my vlog for today. So if you have any um, comments or questions or whatever, please leave them in the comments below. If you're new, please subscribe. Or if you haven't subscribed yet, what do you got to lose? Subscribe. I'm a fun gal. <laughs> On Sundays, I do a topic discussion vlog or sometimes a comedy or sometimes some performance art thing or whatever I'll paste together. And on Thursdays, I do a yoga video, a restorative therapeutic type of video. Um, every Thursday, okay. which I do just one or two poses and some meditation. So uh, we can all just relax and heal together and open up those parts of our body that need to be opened up, which kind of goes with this video, doesn't it? But that's a whole different thing. So I know you're going there. I know you're going. I wasn't. You were. Okay. Thanks for joining me today. Okay. Bye, everybody. Love you.